Um, well, go ahead and read through question 42. I think for a couple seconds how you would attack that, but it, it gives us some new issues, so we'll go through that together. But go ahead and just try to get a basic idea of how you work through it, so we'll get more out of going through it together. Okay. So let's see how we need to uh, modify our picture here. So um, what is the medium that the light is originally in? The medium that the light is originally in here. Well, I think it makes sense that originally the light is in the air. Yes. So N would be one. Now, what's the next medium that the light encounters after it leaves the air? A lens. It seems like that, but let's read a little more carefully. Well, actually, the, 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 the film on the lens. Right. So here we have a lens that has a coating. Mm -hmm. And we know that a coating must be on the outside of the lens. So here's the coating over here, and here's the coating over here. And who's actually going to be the film here? It's going to be the coating that plays the role of the film. It's going to be the coating that plays the role of the film. So our film here is the coating. So it helps to draw this picture first so we can see what we're doing. as an approximation, assume that the coating has the same thickness everywhere, even though maybe it'll be a little less thick at the edges. But I suppose we're looking at the center of the lens here. Or that might that actually, I suppose there could be some way that you could adjust this so the coating is always actually about the same distance. All right, but we'll still use this as an approximation over here. Now, what will be the next medium that the light encounters after leaving the coating? First it's in the air, then it goes to the coating. What's the next medium it encounters on its journey? What's this medium going to be? Um, it's going to be the. Uh... Might help to think about this picture here. First, we're in the air. It's going to be the lens. Then, we're in the coating. Uh -huh. And then it's in the lens. Okay. So, this is the big difference between this problem and the earlier problems. And this is why we can't just reuse our old formulas that we had before. Now, we're going to be in the lens. All right, and that's the end of the story right there. We're, we're not going to have to deal with more than three mediums here. That would be too complicated. So we're just going to think about the first three mediums. Um, the air, the film, and the lens. That's right. We're not going to worry about what happens here. But this picture really helped us here to see what the order of the mediums was. What was the lens made out of? Glass. Right. How do we know? Uh, I think they told us. Yeah, the problem tells us that this lens is made out of glass. So notice how I'm carefully labeling what each of the mediums is in our picture up here. Okay. All right, now I think we're done with this picture. So we're just going to focus on the reflection that happens when you hit the first side of the coating, and then the reflection that happens when you hit the second side of the coating. And we want to know whether the beams that have to go through those two first reflections will be interfering constructively or destructively. Now, um, do you think this is a case where we need to find the constructive interference or the destructive interference? Constructive. How do we know? Um, well, because they tell you how the lens appears. That is, they tell you what color you can see. They tell us that we can see the greenish yellow. So that must be something that's uh, uh, reflecting constructively. Otherwise, we couldn't see it. That's the one that we can see. So we have to focus on constructive interference. And we're going to have to figure out what path length difference will give us constructive interference. But we're going to need to know our ends here. Uh, what was the N for the air? Uh, it's 1. What's the N for the coating? Um, the N for the coating is 
1.25. That information was given to us. Good. Uh, and it's always good in our picture to actually write the ends in the appropriate places. Um, so that helps us think through this a bit. Now, they didn't tell us that the end for the lens, so how can we possibly figure that out? Um, we could refer to a chart. I, I agree with that. I referred to the, of course, there's, I referred to the one from chapter 23, but then there's three types of glass. Indeed. Huh. That's a problem. Oh, well, maybe it won't be a huge problem to us here. Okay, so we have two, uh, three different types of glass, but all we really care about is whether that new end is bigger or smaller than in the film. Right? What we care about, whether we're going into bigger or smaller. So the different types of glass, they have like about, they're all approximately 1.5 or 1.6. Yes. Right? Any type of glass from your table in the textbook, N is 1.5 or 1.6. Alright, so that's good enough. Now before we talk about the path length difference, we need to focus on whether any inversions are going to happen. Well, will there be an inversion when the air when the light passes from the air to the film? Yes. When it reflects off the film, yes, because the film has a bigger end. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a, a note that this ray here got inverted. There was an inversion for that reflected ray. Okay. And how about when we reflect off of the glass? Will there be an inversion? Yes. And how do we know? Because this 1.5 is bigger than 1.25. And 1.6 would be even bigger. This is why we don't care about the exact number. We're just comparing it to this. So there's going to be another inversion <coughs> for this reflection. Two inversions. Two inversions. All right. Well, let's just take into account the effect of the inversions. If we only took into account the effect of the inversions, would the two rays be in phase or out of phase? They would be, uh, well, they would be, they would be in phase. Okay, that's the right answer. Of course, they started as a single beam, so they were in phase there. One inversion would put them half a cycle out of phase, so another inversion would put them back into phase. <clears throat> so originally they were in phase, and then this one got inverted. So it looked like this. That put them half a cycle out of phase, but then this one got inverted. And now they're in phase again. Okay. So, or you can think two negatives make a positive. Okay. Um, so they're back in phase. So, how many wavelengths, so what type of path length difference, what's the shortest path length difference that would now keep them in phase? Uh, one wavelength. Yeah, one wavelength. And then the next shortest would be two. Then three. So let's write down the general formula the way a mathematician would write it. Um, using M. What would be the general formula in terms of M? Oh, and let me catch myself. Again, I shouldn't be saying lambda. I should be saying lambda subscript N, because what matters is the wavelength inside the film, because that's where the path length difference happens. So I should put this lambda N sub N in from the beginning. The three wavelength difference. So in terms of M, what would the equation be? Um, well, M, M could be a just, just what's the equation? That's not something we want to look up. It's just how would a mathematician, I guess the question wasn't simple. Uh, what I'm asking you for is, uh, a mathematician would say that the equation is m times lambda n. Yes. Okay, that, that was what I was going for there. We need to write this in terms of m. We can't just write, we can't just use numbers because then we'd have to go on forever. We'd have to say four times lambda n, five times lambda n, six times lambda n. A mathematician would summarize this by saying that it's m times lambda n. And what's the smallest that m can be? One. Zero, could it be zero? Could there be a path length difference of zero wavelengths? Well, no, because then there wouldn't be a film, right? Because they're actually, we actually have to travel through the film, so there has to be at least one wavelength difference. So this is an example where m can't be zero. You always have to think that through. Sometimes it can be zero and sometimes it can't. Now, how will we calculate the path length difference on the left-hand side of the equation? What mathematical expression should we put for the path length difference on the left-hand side? Again, 
Yeah, that's right. You don't sound too happy about that. <laughs> um, but it's really the same logic in all of these different problems. First, uh, we want to know how much further does this uh, second ray have to travel than the first one? Well, the second ray, first of all, had to travel through the film in this direction, and then it had to travel through the film in this direction. So the first half of the leg was D, and the second half was also D. Um, so the path length difference is 2D. All right, and now we've come up with the equation for constructive interference. Again, why can't we just look this up? Because there's a different equation for every possible pattern of n, so we really have to work it out each time. Uh, and they would do that. This is a, they would expect us, uh, even if you tried to write down all the possible equations, you wouldn't get full credit, because this is the type of problem where they want you to explain where the equation is coming from. 